This is the most accurate weighing instrument in the world. While your average bathroom scale is typically accurate to within about 1%, the Kibble Balance is accurate to within 3 millionths of 1%. And it's called the Kibble Balance named after, no, not the dog food, but its inventor, Brian Kibble. But how does it work, and how is it used to redefine the kilogram? But first, if you like cool and unexpected science facts and applications, make sure to subscribe and click the bell so you can see more videos like this one. Now, back to the video. Our story starts all the way back in 1793, when the French were sick and tired of imperial units. So they created the grave, equal to exactly 1,000 grams, and defined as the mass of a liter of water. Over the decade, they changed the name to the kilogram and created the Kilogram d'Archive, a platinum prototype that matched as closely as possible the mass of a liter of water at 4 degrees Celsius. 80 years later, they switched it out with a stabler mass standard, the International Prototype Kilogram. However, there was a problem. Over the years, they noticed a slight divergence between the IPK and its original copies, up to about 50 micrograms. And worse still, these were all relative measurements to the IPK. Because the IPK was the kilogram, it was impossible to know by how much the IPK itself was changing. So for decades, scientists thought of a way to move the definition off the physical object. For other units, this was much easier. The meter, for instance, used to be defined by the length of this metal bar. But like the IPK, it was subject to fluctuation, which is unacceptable for a standard of measurement. So in 1983, the meter was changed to be the length of the path traveled by light in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 over 299792458 of a second. That fraction chosen because it was the closest approximation to the existing standard. And just like that, they moved the definition off a physical object and onto a constant of nature, the speed of light. But how could you do this with a kilogram? I mean, what constant would you even use? Well, the answer lies in Planck's constant, which has kilograms in its units. Now, Planck's constant shows up a bunch of different ways in science, but most fundamentally, it relates the frequency of a photon to its energy. But in order to define the kilogram in terms of a universal constant, you first need to get as close as you can in measuring the existing standard, the IPK. And that's where the Kibble Balance comes in. So how does the Kibble Balance manage to be so accurate? Well, a traditional balance works by equating the weight on one side with the weight of some known mass on the other side. But the problem here is that there are no exactly known masses. I mean, we're literally defining the unit of mass here, so we can't just put another kilogram on the other side and call it a day. So the Kibble balance actually does all the balancing on one side. A mass standard is placed onto this mass pan, which creates a downward gravitational force, mg. But to counteract this force, attached beneath the mass pan is a coil of wire immersed between two powerful magnets. Now, when current is passed through this wire by the Lorentz force law and the right-hand rule, it creates an upward force that, when current tuned carefully, perfectly balances the gravitational force. Because the flow of current is perpendicular to the magnetic field through the wire, it creates a force with magnitude QVB with upward direction. So the downward force of gravity, mg, perfectly balances the Lorentz force, QVB. To find the total force, we can sum up the force from each individual charge in the loop. The current, I, is the amount of charge that moves past a point per unit time, and velocity, V, is the length that charge moves per unit time. So rearranging, we can get mass times gravity equals magnetic field strength times the length of the wire times current. So now it might look like we are pretty much done. We can define mass in terms of these values. But there's a problem with that. Unfortunately, both the magnetic field strength and length of the wire are difficult to measure with the demanded accuracy. But the Kibble balance has a way to work around this by using a different measuring mode. Now, what I just described was aptly named weighing mode. The second mode is called velocity mode. In velocity mode, the mass is lifted off the mass pan and the current is turned off. But B and L are the same. Now, this is where the other side of the balance comes into play. A motor on the right side moves the coil through the magnetic field at constant velocity. By Faraday's law, the change in flux, that is, the amount of magnetic field lines going straight through the loop, induces an electromotive force. A voltage. Now the velocity is adjusted in hundreds of mini trials to find what velocity induces exactly the same voltage they found in weighing mode. Now the equation for this works out to be V equals BLV, where little v is the velocity of the coil through the field. Now we have two equations, so after rearranging we can set them equal to each other and eliminate B and L without ever having to know them exactly, which is great. So how do we go about measuring these variables here? 
Well, current, it turns out, is also difficult to measure exactly, but by using Ohm's law, we can sub it with voltage over resistance. Now, to measure V and R, two different quantum effects are used, the Josephson effect and the quantum Hall effect, which are both beyond the scope of this video, but importantly, they have equations that we can use. The Josephson effect allows us to linearly convert from a microwave frequency to a voltage, given by the equation V equals frequency times NH over 2E, where N is the number of Josephson junctions, which is built into the Kibble balance, H is Planck's constant, I told you it was coming back, and E is the elementary charge. Resistance is calculated using the quantum Hall effect, where R equals H over PE squared. H and E are the same, and P is another constant that we know. V, the velocity found in velocity mode, is measured to nine significant figures using laser interferometry, which works by sending out a laser beam and measuring the interference created by it reflecting off the object and off a stationary point. G, the gravitational acceleration, is typically thought to be 9.8 meters per second squared. But when we're dealing with precision at the ninth decimal place, we have to be a lot more specific. So G is constantly measured using a gravimeter, a device that drops an object down an evacuated tube and uses laser interferometry to measure acceleration. And even still, there are so many other complications I've glossed over. Each measurement has sources of error that they try to mathematically correct, such as how BL is not completely the same between weighing and velocity modes. Also, the entire device is operated in vacuum, and the temperature is controlled to within thousandths of a degree. So now that we know how to solve for each variable, now we can rearrange the equation and solve for h. Note that we can accurately determine each value. Prior to 2019, this would have been a way to measure Planck's constant. Just put a one kilogram mass in, measure all the other values, and solve for h. And scientists spent years doing exactly this, trying to measure Planck's constant as accurately as possible. And they did, and they fixed h to be exactly 6.62607015 times 10 to the minus 34. And now, post-2019, we use that fixed constant to define mass. Moving the definition off a physical object locked in a basement under three bell jars in Paris to a fundamental universal constant, all made possible by the Kibble balance. And this change didn't only affect the kilogram. The kilogram is actually used in the definitions of two other base units as well as dozens of other derived SI units. So just five years ago, for the first time ever, we had a system of units based entirely on fixed constants of nature and not faulty physical objects. It's taken us since the 1790s to pull this off and centuries of revolutionary ideas and inventions, but we finally did it.